Our next reading of Scripture today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. And then Jesus came to the place and looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it, though, they began to grumble and said, He, he's going to be a guest of one who's a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half my possessions, Lord, I'll give it to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord lives forever. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He too is a child of Abraham. By showing what a son of Abraham looks like that day Zacchaeus received salvation. A good Jew struggling, striving for God, climbing that tree just to get a glimpse of the Lord, faithful to God even if it hadn't happened until that very moment. We, likewise, are children of Abraham. It's spiritually, that is. And in our community of faith, we trace our lineage all the way back to the father of Abraham. We are church. And today we are remembering the saints. So what is a saint? We were actually just talking about this in the Revelation class, the Bible study. Uh, In Revelation, a saint is specifically a Christian who has served and died under Rome's persecution. In Revelation, it's specifically talking about those martyrs, those folks as the saints. And in Paul's writings, sometimes he's talking about the martyrs. Sometimes he's talking about all of us. People of faith, followers of Christ as the saints. Paul talks about equipping the saints for ministry. That means helping you obtain whatever it is that you need to carry out the Lord's work. That's equipping the saints. That's equipping you for ministry. He's calling us saints. Biblically, we could simply say that saints are faithful Christians. Now, Donnie McClurkin sang a song where he said that a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up. Today, as the church, we celebrate All Saints Day. As we celebrate All Saints Day, we, the church, are actually opening up that word saint a little bit further to include everyone, no matter, uh, regardless their faith, regardless of this or that consideration. Uh, um, It is to remember everyone who's gone before us, all those who've had deep impacts on our life. We remember those beautiful gifts from the Lord. And we are challenged today to consider what those gifts of life from God mean to us as we continue to live in this world today. Now for that, in honor of the saints, however you define the word saint exactly, if, if we're talking generally, if we're talking faithful Christians, if we're talking the martyrs, in honor of the saints... We look to Zacchaeus. A few months ago now, we hopped onto this journey with Jesus up in Galilee where we were with him when he set his face toward Jerusalem. Now, Carrie, I know you love maps, so I got this one up here for you. 
Right here, Galilee, that's where we're from. And um, uh, not too long ago, just a couple months, Jesus set his face to go towards Jerusalem. Nothing was going to stop him. And then he came down this way through Samaria, and then came down this way down into Jericho. And that's where he is now. He's come a long way in these past couple months, and he's getting ready to approach Jerusalem. Somewhere uh, still up there around Galilee, we were talking about Jericho. You may remember the road from Jerusalem to Jericho was the setting for the Good Samaritan. We talked about being humble, seeing humanity in every person. We talked about being a good neighbor. Galilee, it's a long way from Jericho, especially going the way that Jesus went. He's been doing tons of ministry along the way, all those stops and little towns and places, stopping at people's houses. He stopped a lot of places, teaching, healing, saving. Now we're in chapter 19. All right, Jesus has finally reached Jericho. He's passing through. And before long, Jesus will be in Jerusalem, as Jesus described himself, the holy city that kills prophets, that throws stones at the people God sends. But today, we're not there yet. Today, we are in the middle of Jericho, a city that claims to be the oldest city in the world, as you saw that picture we showed at the beginning. Um, this is a picture of a building in the ancient part of Jericho. And that little sign up there says that that's a building that dates back to 2300 to 2700 B.C., all right, so that's like 4,000, 4,500 years before now. Long time, very, very old city. Uh, and it's the first place that Joshua and the Israelites stopped when they entered the Promised Land. They gave Jericho a chance to welcome them, but the Israelites were not welcomed into Jericho. So with the help of a woman named Rahab and by the power of God, the Israelites were able to achieve their first conquest to receive what God promised them in the promised land on the walls of Jericho falling outward. Now, there's been people that say you can look at you know, Jericho and say there's signs of the walls falling outward and trying to prove it like that. But yeah, if you look at Jericho, it's kind of hard to tell what happened back then. Um, before going too much further, I wanted to mention about the, um, the pictures. So that is a building in the old part of town. And here, if you see, this is when you wander back a little bit, you can see the depths that this archaeological discovery goes down. Because you dig down here, you see these steps going down. It comes all the way down here. And um, my wife went to have coffee with our driver at the time while I was walking around this. So she didn't see what I was doing. There really wasn't anybody like to make sure you don't do things that are unsafe. Um, so that's kind of, if you see, it's blocked off right here with the fence. Well, I didn't really think that stairway looked like the safest way to try to get down there. So I walked all the way around and found another better way down there. And I ended up working my way down a little bit. My wife would have killed me if she'd seen what I was doing climbing down there. But when I climbed down there to the bottom of it, I found this. And this was like another tunnel that was actually covered. There is some safety measure, apparently. And they cover this gate so you don't dive down into that hole or well or whatever exactly that was. But the history in Jericho just keeps going deeper. And then when we were actually in the tram coming back um, from the uh, Monastery of the Temptation. Um, this is a picture of Jericho as we're riding the trams up in the air so you can kind of get a, an aerial view of it. So that's what Jericho looks like today. And that little part right here, I believe, is the old city that I was wandering around in. Maybe, I think, that's what that was. I know it was right next to the uh, circle with the palm trees. Jesus entering into Jericho. It should remind us of the Israelites entering into Jericho, a time when being faithful meant success, and lacking faithfulness meant disaster. Faithfulness was a huge, huge theme in those conquest stories. Uh, last week's scripture, if you remember, we were talking uh, about a scripture that reminded us to be humble, a scripture about the Pharisee and the tax collector. 
the Pharisee standing in judgment over the tax collector. The tax collector in that story ended up being the faithful one, even though by all other accounts he was the bad guy. The Pharisee got full of himself, who by all other accounts was supposed to be the good guy, and he got all judgmental. His pride undercut all the otherwise good stuff that he was doing as a person of faith. And that was a parable. But now we find a tax collector in real life. Jesus meets him in Jericho, a chief tax collector. Not just any old run-of-the-mill tax collector, a chief tax collector, a big man in town to watch out for. He's got his hands in people's pockets all over the place, and nobody can say anything about it. But that's not what he's doing today. He's like that tax collector in the parable Jesus told not long ago. The one who was beating on his breast, begging God for mercy, wanting to make things right in his life. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Who knows this song? Anybody know the song? All right, Becky knows the song. You want to sing it? Oh, Barb, no. you got, somebody want to sing it for us? It was a real old man, a real old man was he. He caught him with a sycamore tree. So he wanted to see. And as the Lord was passing by, he looked up in the tree and said, Zacchaeus, you come down. Amen. I hope you got that on recording. That was beautiful. Amen. I'm glad you guys could remember it because I could not remember all the words. I remember singing the song, but I had to go looking up the words to even remember. All I remembered was the wee little man and something about a sycamore tree. Uh, but that scripture tells you know, almost the whole, um, or the song tells almost the whole scripture. You know, it's, it's a memorable song because this is a memorable story. You know, it's, there's something cute about it. There's something funny about it. This little guy climbing the, the tree just to see over the crowd to see Jesus. You know, we see the wee little man's wee little humble attitude toward Jesus. Excited to see him just like a little kid. Jesus comes right to him. Jesus knows he's ready he, as he's up in that tree. By the way, this picture is a fuller picture of the sycamore tree, Zacchaeus' tree in Jericho. Jesus comes right to him. Jesus knows he's ready. Right here, right now, here Jesus is standing under the tree telling Zacchaeus, come on down. I must stay at your house today. This is no less urgent than Jesus needing food and a place to stay for the night. Jesus has come a long way to get here. He shows up at just the right time. After traveling all this way, Jesus has a multitude with him. He's got his disciples with him. He's got the general crowds with him. He's got opponents with him trying to put stumbling blocks in front of him the whole way. Yet he singles out this wee little man who nobody likes. He's a tax collector. He worked for the Romans. Nobody liked this guy. Who in the world would eat at that guy's house? That guy is a sinner. Jesus. Seriously, Jesus. You're going to eat at that guy's house. People start grumbling right away, talking about how Jesus is going to that guy's house. Everybody's got something to say. But Jesus didn't see a tax collector. He saw a person as humble as a person could be. Jesus saw someone ready to be the gift of God that he was created to be in this world. Jesus saw a person of faith. Jesus saw someone who was ready to be a saint. What showed it was Zacchaeus's, not only his humility in the beginning, but then him carrying out that humility with his offer to make things right. He had a bullet to bite. He was not a liked man for good reason. He'd hurt a lot of people. But at this point, he humbled himself enough to be ready to bite that bullet. To give half of everything he had to the poor. Take it right off the bat. Just take half of it, give it to the poor. And then, anybody I've defrauded along the way, pay him back four times as much. Today in Jericho, Zacchaeus absolutely was ready to be a saint. That leaves the question for us today. As we remember the saints... As we measure up our own lives, uh, you know, according to that wee little man who was climbing the tree that day, 
Are we ready to be saints? I mean the kind of saints that Paul talks about when he calls us to equip the saints for ministry. Along the way from Galilee, Jesus has been teaching us to choose God and God alone, to cherish the faith God has given us, to respond to God's grace, to pray all the time, to be humble. If we're ready to do that, if we're ready to follow the ways of Jesus, to do as he says, then we most definitely are ready to be saints, just like Zacchaeus. As we're talking about in Revelation, a prophet, you know, a prophet is someone who speaks God's word. He calls us to be faithful. You have, may, may have noticed that as we were talking about it earlier with Habakkuk, saying the righteous man is rewarded with life for his fidelity. The righteous person is rewarded with life for their faithfulness. Zacchaeus shows in his humility his faithfulness. In his physical and spiritual wee little stature. That part that at least uh, was most memorable for me about that song. The wee little man. He shows what faithfulness looks like. And Jesus reminds us that's exactly what Abraham, God's first prophet, was teaching us from the start. To be faithful believers. Today, even though we are in New Pal and not Jericho, let us remember Abraham, Joshua and the Israelites, Jesus, Zacchaeus. Let us remember all the prophets who taught us to be faithful, all the saints who showed us how to be faithful, and the very gift of God's grace that we've received and everyone who's entered our lives and made it more beautiful. And today, in this very moment, in the honor of the saints, let us also be the saints God calls us to be. We too are children of Abraham.